Hello all you Conan Exile fans out there, it's Granny Gamester back with another beginner's guide to Conan Exiles. Now I am playing on the PlayStation 4 single player and this guide is actually for single players. I'm going to show you how to make yourself admin and access the special features of this game. Uh, in my opinion, this is what makes this game awesome above all others. So let's get right to it. You want to press your option button on your PlayStation uh, controller, and this will bring up settings. It will bring up character, so you can remove your bracelet, character copy, recreate character here. Server uh, has an event log, which you can actually access now. So if you hit that, uh, you can increase the area that it will cover for events so that it will report any event that's happened in your game. This is particularly helpful if you think you have lost a thrall or he has died. You can check this event log and it will let you know what's been going on in your game. So that is the event log. Player list will not concern you because that's for a server. Request help is new. This is awesome. If you put in your email, you can do a bug report, report a player, Funcom ID change, official server performance, ban appeal, and then character transfers. Bug appeal or bug appeal. Bug report, I feel, is very important because if you have a bug in your game, by all means, report it to Funcom. This is how they're going to figure out what's going on. So go ahead and do that as much as you can. So what we're going to be concerned with here is settings. So you want to click on settings and that brings up a whole uh, gambit of settings for your game. These first three are pretty uh, normal for most games. Video, I like to adjust gamma, especially if I'm on the Isle of Sipta because that tends to be a little dark in areas. So if you move this to the right, it will be lighter in dungeons and uh, dark areas will become lighter. If you move it to the left, everything's going to be darker. So go ahead and adjust that uh, according to what you like. And then we have audio. You can adjust your volume, your music volume, your voice volume. Uh, chat will not pertain to you. Uh, you might want to check out some of these others. Then there is gameplay. Of course, there can be nudity on the PC, but it is not allowed on the PlayStation. You can only do partial, but I always go for none. And then you can have uh, show nameplates. This is the names of your uh, thralls, their levels, all of that information above your pets that shows up there. The show HUD dot is, of course, your aiming dot. You'll want to have that checked. And then you can uh, check out the rest of these. You can show your journey steps if you want to. Uh, you can show your weapon trail, which is kind of fun. So if you swing your axe, it'll show a little red trail. It's kind of cool. Um, check out the rest of these. See if it's anything you want to adjust. Then we have controls for your controller. You can uh, adjust your left and right stick sensitivity and your dead zone with these. Then your control presets. So there, it shows you the default settings of your controller. So you can uh, find out what button does what. If you want to know how to jump, this is where you look for that. And then we have server settings. Now this is where all the fun happens. So as you can see right now, I'm on general here and nothing is showing up. Everything is all gray. And that's because I have not clicked on that yet. So I just did and click on it again and it will give me admin rights. So now you can see everything is lit up. So now I have the ability, I have made myself administrator of this game. So now I have the ability to change the difficulty of my game. Civilized is easy, decadent is normal, and barbaric is hard. And trust me, it is hard. Uh, this is for a server, which is not going to concern us and all the rest of this as well. But this down here, you want to take a look at. You might want to check this one uh, or uncheck it, I should say, because this enables the sandstorm. And we're going to uncheck that for right now because I don't want one happening while I'm doing this guide. So we're going to uncheck that so we do not have one. Uh, these others are uh, 
based on servers as well, your clan max size. You could change it to a single player if you wanted to have a, a really large clan. You can go ahead and check that if you want. And then we have progression of your game. Now this is the player's XP rate multiplier. So everything that you do in the game, you earn XP, which is experience points. So if you want to earn less, move it to the left. If you want to gain more experience for everything you do, move it to the right. Player XP time multiplier, XP player XP kill multiplier. So this is all uh, 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 pertains to how much experience points you get for doing this. So uh, every time you kill one, do you get more experience points for killing enemies? You can up that one if you want, et cetera, et cetera. And the same with uh, XP for harvesting and XP for crafting. I usually leave these alone. I'm pretty happy with the way they are. So then we have the day night cycle, which I absolutely love. You can change the day cycle speed, move it to the right. Your day will move by faster, move it to the left. It'll go slower. Uh, daytime speed, the same thing. I usually will adjust nighttime because I don't like nighttime. So I will make it go by really fast. Yeah, <laughs> it suits me just fine. Uh, dawn to dusk time. Uh, catch up time refers to a server as well. So then we have survival. Now you can change your stamina cost that you use in the game. If you think you're using way too much stamina for everything you do, go ahead and lower that. To the left is uh, less stamina. To the right is more stamina. Then you have uh, active thirst, active hunger, uh, player idle thirst time, uh, hunger time. This is a really important one. If you do not want to drop equipment on death, leave this blank. If you want to lose equipment on death, you want a little challenge in your game, go ahead and check that. Uh, everybody can lose a corp or loot a corp. That is corpse. That is for a server as well. And I think the rest of these are, yeah. These are as well. Player corruption gain multiplier. Now that that you can adjust that if you want to get more corruption <laughs> from areas, go ahead and do that. That might come into play with 3.0 though. If you want to gain uh, more corruption quicker so that you can get into sorcery faster, that might be one you want to manipulate. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just thought of that. So that might uh, that might work for you. Um, this is the player corruption gain from sorcery. So yeah, actually this one is for 3.0 versus this one. This one actually refers to, uh, when you walk up to a obelisk and, and are going to the city, uh, how fast you gain. This one is from using sorcery. Uh, yeah. So this is the one you might want to increase the amount of corruption that you get from that. So then we have combat. Now this is player damage multiplier. So if you um, want to cause more damage to your enemies, go ahead and move that to the right. If you want it to cause less, make your game a little harder, move it to your left. This is the player damage taken. So if you want to take more damage, move it to the right. You want to take less, move it to the left. You can do this with your NPC. Uh, NPCs, you can do this with your thrall, et cetera, et cetera. You can, uh, actually tweak your friendly fire damage if you are um, on a server and they have friendly fire on their server and then building damage and then durability and thrall wake up time those are all uh, pertain to server then we get into harvesting you can change your item spoil rate your harvest amount multiplier so if you are getting say uh seven pieces of wood from every whack on the tree if you want to get more move it to the right you'll get more pieces per per hit with your axe if you want less move it to the left uh if you want things like a tree that you just cut down you want those to respawn faster move it to the right if you want it to go slower move it to the left and then land claim radius multiplier, that's to do with servers, and that's grayed out. 
Then we go into crafting. Crafting time multiplier. If you want things to craft slower, go ahead and move it to the left, faster to the right. Thrall crafting time. This is really important to understand because this has to do with your wheel of pain. So if you want it to take less time for that wheel of pain to train that thrall, move it to the left and it will be instant. Move it to the right. It's going to take forever for your thrall uh, to tame in the wheel of pain. So don't move it to the right. <laughs> Because especially with a single player uh, on a server, at least the time is running all the time. But on a single player, it is only running when you are playing. And that's the reason why I will turn it to zero and have it instant. Because it's ridiculous for a single player to wait that long for a thrall to tame. Yeah. Fuel burn time is uh, how long it takes your your piece of fuel will take to burn. Uh, you know, how quickly things or how quickly it will use the items to burn in your furnace and uh, then cost for your uh, burn items as well. Then there is the building. This is new. Now, creative mode server. You want to leave this on mad admin only for this because if you put it on everyone or force for everyone, uh, it will not show up when you go back to your uh, beginning panel. So you want to make sure you leave that on admins only. You can allow building anywhere. This is a nice feature. If you check this, you can build anywhere. There's no restrictions whatsoever. And the same with stability loss multiplier. If you put this on zero, that means you do not have to deal with pillars anymore. Your building pieces will not lose stability. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty huge in 3.0. Um, this does not pertain to you as a single player, uh, as well as uh, disabled building uh, abandonment. You might want to check that. It may work with single player. I'm not sure there. Um, these also are part of a server, but... If you're having an issue with it, single player, check these out. Um, it might it might fix things for you. Then there's the purge. Now, as I said, I disabled this purge because I didn't want one happening while I am doing this guide. But if you want to purge, go ahead and click on that. And if you do, you can adjust the level of your purge. Now, a purge level six is a really high purge. Uh, a level four is kind of middle of the road. If you're just starting out and you like to get a purge, but you just don't want a real nasty one, make it a level one or two. And that will give you experience with the purge without having to worry about them destroying everything. Because purges can be fun, guys. Don't be afraid of them. Now, the purge delay, uh, that's how long it takes to actually, uh, from the time you turn purple to it, to uh, activate and tell you that you're going to get a purge. Uh, these, This right here refers to a server. Now, the purge preparation time, this is how long it takes from the time you've been noticed that you're going to get a purge till the time the purge actually happens. So this is the time that it's going to take for you to prepare for the purge now that you have one. Usually, uh, 10 minutes is good enough for me. I can go around and put truncheons on my thralls. Um, I have plenty of time to do that if I want to knock everybody out versus kill them. Yeah, whatever you feel you need for time to prepare, you can adjust that. You can move it all the way up to 30 minutes if you want. Then there is purge duration, which uh, is just what it implies. You can have the purge last up to an hour if you want. 30 minutes, I find, is usually uh, a pretty good length time for a purge. Uh, this is, refers to a server. You're not going to need this. This, um, you can allow building. By default, building is not allowed during a purge, but you can go ahead and check that and allow that if you want to. And then the purge meter trigger value, this is how many experience points you need to get uh, to actually activate a purge. And you can change that. If you want a longer time before you actually get a purge, just bump that up to 100 thousand experience points uh then it'll take longer for that purple meter to fill up the purge meter update interval i'm not sure what that means uh and then initial purge delay uh that's probably has to do with the server as well i really don't know if somebody out there knows please comment and then we have pet and hunger now the animal pen crafting time 
if you want your animal pen to craft your animals relatively quickly, <laughs> put it all the way to the left. If you want it to take longer, go ahead and move it to the right. And the food container range, this pertains to the area that your food container will feed uh, your pets. So if you want a really big area, move it all the way to the right and it will cover more pets in your area. So if you have a really, really big, large base, you want might want to move that to the right. Uh, use minion population limit. Uh, no, I don't, I've never bothered to use that either. So then we want to move to the Maelstrom. Now this prefer, uh, refers to the Isle of Sipta. So you can uh, disable the Maelstrom if you want. I uh, just uncheck this box and you can see this is all gray now. But if you want to deal with a Maelstrom, you can also tweak the Maelstrom. So as you can see here, I have uh, how many players before the Maelstrom happens. That's on a server. Um, you can allow building during a Maelstrom or not. That's up to you. You can show the Maelstrom on the map if you'd like. Uh, you can elder uh, enable elder things if you want or not. If you don't like the elder things, just go ahead and uncheck that. Uh, it gives you the elder thing idle uh, lifespan. All of these options that you can take a look at for the Maelstrom. If you're really into it, there's a lot of things that you can do here. But once you get through that, you can see you can also tinker with the vault. So the vault refresh time you can move. If you want it to refresh faster, um, move it to the left. It'll only take a, a few seconds. If you want it to take longer to refresh, then go ahead and move it to the right. Now, I'm not sure what the deviation means there, so I usually leave that alone. Um, you can also tweak the surge cost for the Lay Shrine uh, activities. So if you don't want it to cost as much materials to actually activate the Lay Shrine, uh, go ahead and move that to the left. If you want it to take more materials, move it to the right. Um, the surge uh, despawn timer. So uh, that's how long the surge actually asks, uh, lasts. So you can manipulate that. And then the Lay Shrine Defense Active Time Multiplayer. Not sure what that means, so I just leave that alone as well. So that's all the settings that you can tweak with, guys. Uh, it's awesome. So if we go back to our original um, panel here, now you can see we have an admin mode here and we have an enter creative mode. So let's check our admin panel first. So if we open this up, we can see that now we can change our player stats. We can change our encumbrance. We can change our health from minimum to maximum. We can change our feats. We can change our level and uh, we can set the level that we want to be at and apply that. Then there's other commands. Uh, I don't usually use any of these with the exception of fly. So if you want to fly, if you're building and you want to get up high, uh, yeah, this is how you do it. Awesome. You can just fly all around and do all the building. That's how these uh, players who make ginormous builds get around that. Yeah. So if you want to walk again, just go back into your admin panel and go to walk and hit that and you will walk. Just make sure you're not high in the air when you do this, because if you do, when you fall, you will take fall damage and it could kill you. So don't don't do that. Make sure uh, that you're low to the ground when you do select that. So then we have cloak. If you hit if you hit that and I use this a lot when I'm doing guides because I do want do not want enemies um, interfering with me or attacking me while I'm doing a guide. Invisibility is just that you are invisible when you hit that one. I don't use demigod. I don't use god mode. Uh, no sprint cost is, I believe this is new. Uh, if you don't want your sprinting to cost you any stamina, go ahead and check that. Ghost mode is fun. Ghost mode, uh, if you want to go down underneath the mesh and see if you have lost anything down here, uh, yeah, go into ghost mode and you can go right under the mesh and look for anything that you might have lost, a thrall. Sometimes they get hidden down under the mesh here. And you can also go through buildings. Yeah, 
it is exactly what it implies. You are a ghost and you can move through buildings with this mode. <laughs> this is this is quite fun, actually. So that is a ghost mode. So let's get back into our admin panel here as soon as it will let me. So we'll click out of ghost mode. And then you can do no building cost. So if you want to build, it doesn't cost you any materials at all. You can check that. You can unlock all your recipes if you want. And you can also ignore stability loss. Yeah, you can just go in and check this. If this is a temporary situation, you happen to be building something, you don't want to deal with pillars or anything, just go ahead and, and check that. And then we have no spell cost. Now this has to do with the new 3.0 sorcery spells. So if you don't want them to cost you anything to make, go ahead and check that. Then you can adjust your eating. Um, whether you're hungry or thirsty, um, food and water. This one I use a lot when I am live streaming. Yeah, I will want it on noontime. As you can see, my daytime lit right up. Uh, I don't bother with the length of day, but I do want to freeze the time and the sky. Yeah, so while I am doing the live stream, it always stays the same. And that's particularly nice if you don't want to deal with rain or nighttime and daytime, all of that while you're streaming. This is a good one to use. So that is all of those settings. Then we have spawn NPCs. This is where you can spawn in any thrall that you want. And there is a ginormous list. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it'll take you forever. If you look at my little slider on the right hand side, how slowly that's moving as I scroll through all of these thralls that I can spawn in. Yeah. But you want to be careful to make sure that you check this box before you spawn in any thralls because this will spawn them in as thralls, tamed thralls. If you do not have this checked, they will spawn in as enemies and they will try to kill you. Now, if you make a mistake and you do spawn them in, you can actually kill all spawned NPCs. Yeah, so you can kill them all instantly if you've made that mistake, which is a nice little feature there. So that is uh, spawning in. Let's go ahead and spawn in a AC or armor. Uh, a level four, he will be a name thrall, but it doesn't tell you what their name is. So if you want to search for a thrall up here um, and you, you try to type in the name, it's going to be very difficult to do that because uh, they don't list them under names here. So searching is good for some things and some things it's not. So if you want to search in for, say, uh, let's say archers, Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Archer. And go ahead and click that in. It's going to give me a whole list of archers here. So if you're look, looking for um, a particular um, race of archer, that you can do here. You can get a black hand Kushite. Yeah, you can do that. So that's how that works, guys. Now, I did spawn in one. So let's check our inventory. And yeah, there he is. Now, he is a uh, named armorer, and his name is Morena, and he also has a special ability. So if we go ahead and put him in here, he cannot be placed because what I have spawned in is a station thrall. So I can put him in the armorer bench if I want to, but he will not spawn out as uh, a thrall to help me with biting or uh, archery yeah so let's go back in so that covers uh all of our npcs that you can spawn in then we have uh, the ability to spawn in any item in the game and i mean any if you uh, know what you're looking for you can type it in here let's say uh gruel i want to look for some gruel i hit my r2 it's going to bring up 
rule, but only if I check the right thing. It's not in resources, it's not in gear, it's not in building, but it is in other. So if I click on all of these, but I click on other, there is the gruel. Now I can click in one at a time by hitting my X button, or if I hold down on my L2, I can get a stack. So I can get a hundred gruel by holding down my L2. So this is how you can spawn in anything in the game, guys. <laughs> this is a real cheat. Now, um, I highly advise you to be careful using this because it can ruin your game. Then you get lazy, you spawn in everything, the game loses its charm. You know, grinding for things sometimes adds to the game. Uh, yeah, so don't rush to that one. <laughs> it's handy once in a while, but don't depend on it. That's just some advice from somebody who has thousands of hours in this game, and I've done it every which way there is. So let's go back to our beginning here. And now you see we have enter creative mode. Now creative mode allows you to build easily without being impaired by spiral mechanics. It doesn't affect your progression at all in the game. And uh, it and it, exiting it reverts you back to the state you were in before you entered it. So what this means is that no enemies are going to bother you. Uh, you're not going to you know, get thirsty or hungry or any of that. And it doesn't affect the progression, which means that you don't uh, earn any XP points for anything that you're doing. So it's not going to make the purge happen faster uh, by using this, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and enter that. I already have the uh, construction hammer available to me. So let's, it's in our inventory. So let's go ahead and put this here and take a look at this. Now, as you can see, I have a building piece here. Now, if I hit my L1 button, which is my top bumper button, you can see I have the ability to choose building pieces, crafting stations, or decorations. Now, these are not going to cost me any materials to make. I do not have to have these in my uh, knowledge, which used to be feet points. I do not have to have them checked off. I have access to absolutely everything in the game. Now I own all these DLCs. So if I hit my top bumper buttons here, you can see I can scroll through all of these that I have, the black ice build, the arena, the bridges, the stable. It breaks it all down for me. Uh, this guys is huge huge in this game because before you had to scroll through all these pieces to get to uh, items that you wanted now it's just at your fingertips and the same with crafting stations this one covers all the smithing stations this one covers carpentry now i'm hitting my r1 to select these and this is all the alchemy Cooking, farming, general, religion, sorcery, companions, special, etc., etc., and the same for decorations. It breaks it all down. So here's the beds. Here's all the storage. Here's all your light items, your signs and notes, your banners, your statues, your totems, your trophies, anything, any all your furniture. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's awesome. So if building is your thing. If you get into this game just to build and use all this, this is a boon. This is just wonderful. And to get out of this, all you have to do is bring up this again, exit creative mode, and we are out of it. Yeah. If you do not exit this, uh, your game will not run normally, and that is why, because you are still in that crafting mode and uh, nothing will work for you uh, because it does uh, prevent, you know, food and all those things that I mentioned before, using food and animals and things like that. So you want to make sure you exit out of that to get back to your normal game. Yeah, guys. So that is how you get into admin panel and enter creative mode. This game is fabulous. I don't know another game that does this. And this allows you so many options on how to play this game. You do not need to play this game to enjoy it. If you just like building, 
Uh, get in here and use those tools and build to your little heart's content. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, all right, guys, if you liked, give me that big old like. And if you would like to see more, just subscribe. And if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified when I post my next video. Well, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, GG out.